our next speaker coming up, and that's Francisco from Guardian. And I'm so glad for Sonia. Thank you so much for putting the two of us in contact, and thank you so much for making it out. Um, I've been quite stunned from just looking at the, the little bit that you share on the website, which is not very much. So thank you so, so much. Having Sonia as your support is a strong signal, so I can't wait to hear what you have to offer. Awesome. Cool, yeah, thanks for inviting me. This will definitely be a teaser. Um, but uh, ask me more questions afterward. So um, the uh, premise behind Gordian, uh, I'm gonna skip this first slide because I think we all agree aging's a problem. Um, and uh, this one I'll go through very quickly. Uh, obviously we've, been, uh, we've had success at curing disease, uh, but in particular curing aging uh, has stymied us uh, entirely. And so Martin and I, uh, Martin, my co-founder, uh, a couple years ago tried to ask ourselves really why and what is it that we can do to um, really change the preclinical process uh, so we can uh, improve this. And the premises that we saw were, uh, or at least the issues that we saw, were that um, the current preclinical process, the way it works, uh, essentially um, somebody, academic, GWAS, whatever, cup, comes up with their favorite target out of the 20,000 that they could uh, possibly pick. Um, spends a lot of time uh, doing medicinal chemistry <laughs> uh, or something like that uh, in order to create a jug, drug that hits that target, usually with in vitro experiments. Um, on average, uh, $17.5 million, four and a half years, just to then try it uh, in an animal, usually find out that it doesn't work, go through that cycle over and over again. And unfortunately, this process just doesn't scale across targets. I think this is why we end up with you know, the classic A beta for Alzheimer's, um, you know, just kind of banging our heads against the wall on the same targets. And so, Martin and I asked ourselves, what can we do about this? What would actually uh, help move things forward, particularly for aging, where making these guesses is very, very difficult. And we said, can we develop a platform where we just test them all? Uh, we admit that we are not good at untangling the Gordian knot, at trying to figure out what the right guesses are. Let's just go test every single one, um, or you know, we can be slightly smarter than that, but go test thousands of uh, different targets, up and down regulate them, uh, and do that in vivo, do that in representative uh, animal models of disease, so that we can actually just figure out what is actually working in that animal, and then uh, devote our preclinical and clinical efforts to um, uh, therapies that you know, we've demonstrated in vivo efficacy for. Um, and so uh, we think we've done uh, just that. Um, we took advantage of uh, two technologies. I think it's a big kind of why now uh, story. Um, in particular, gene therapy and single cell sequencing that effectively allows us to move the Petri dish uh, into the animal and run cell level experiments uh, in uh, individual animals. And so very briefly, how does that work? Uh, we can generate pooled library of uh, gene therapies that um, target uh, thousands of different uh, genes, uh, up-regulate, down-regulate, essentially anything we can package uh, into an AEV capsid, we can go and test. We can inject that pool library simultaneously into an individual animal model of disease. Um, that uh, pooled library will go transfect the tissue of interest, in this case the lung, for example, um, essentially delivering uh, individual gene therapies to individual cells. Um, we can then uh, grab those cells. Uh, th those cells will be allowed to express in the living animal for a month or two. We can take them, single cell sequence them uh, in clusters, and then find out what did intervention A do, intervention B, intervention C, um, and did that actually restore uh, the health of the cell uh, in any way. Um, the single cell transcriptome is kind of the basis, the phenotype uh, of our uh, uh, readout. Um, which allows us really to explore all of the uh, biological, um, uh, all the biological pathways, relevant pathways. How is it that uh, each of these interventions are actually modifying uh, the biology of these cells uh, in vivo? Um, our whole preclinical process takes place uh, in vivo. Um, again, kind of uh, going with the mantra that in vitro just kind of rarely uh, correlates with uh, in vivo results. So do as much as in vivo as we can. Um, I'm not sure why the monkey became blue. Um, <laughs> it was not in the original slides, but anyway, um, monkeys are good animal models. Um, so uh, the uh, advantages for the platform, so obviously we do everything in vivo. We don't need very many animals, um, and so we can actually choose the most relevant animal model uh, for the disease that we're going after. We can go after aged, uh, rare, scarce animal models because we need just a handful. We don't need kind of a vivarium's worth of you know, pigs or, or monkeys. Um, people ask us why there's a horse up there. We actually have an osteoarthritis program. We've uh, uh, joined um, 
uh, teamed up with uh, um, a university that can actually source naturally occurring uh, OA models of, um, in horses uh, rather than the kind of engineered mouse models where they cut the, um, uh, uh, one of the ligaments and the mouse hobbles around gets something that looks like osteoarthritis. And so these are the kind of places that we want to play in. Um, we can create our wish list of potential genetic targets, put them all into that animal, find out which one works, uh, and then focus um, our uh, preclinical and clinical development on uh, targets that have uh, in vivo efficacy. And that's it. Just another summary. That's it. You can, <laughs> you can read. Have you tested your platform on known interventions to see how many it can catch? Uh, we have tested the platform, uh, so almost. We tested the platform in uh, a positive control context. So we've demonstrated that the platform works end to end. The way we did that was we took a mouse model uh, that was a monogenic disorder. Essentially, we know what the right answer is. We know what the right target is. We can put a library of things in there that has a few things that are right target, a bunch of things that aren't, um, and then go uh, recapitulate that, um, right? Positively identify the positive ones, negatively identify the negative ones. We've done that. Um, we did that in the tissues for the um, uh, preclinical, for the indications that we actually want to go after, a liver disease and a lung disease. Um, and uh, now we're going to turn to uh, those animal models and actually start applying them. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I know we have a bunch of questions. Maybe we have more time afterwards. Thank you so much, Francisco. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh,